Hey people, so it's Friday the 29th and it's almost the end of the month. I'm just sitting here, decided, well heck, I'm not doing nothing. I'll go ahead and put up the, uh, put up the camera and say hello and just um, vibe for a few minutes. Um, this weekend is Halloween and I have been over Halloween for years now. I don't really get into it. I did like it as a kid and in my early uh, adult years and just um, tired of it. <coughs> Quite frankly, my point of view is that life is so utterly strange right now that Halloween isn't even, it doesn't even look like fun to me. It's, I know that it's in essence, if you just, you know, if I look at it very selflessly it's all about this thing for the kids to have some fun that's cool but just everything is just so strange that it just I don't enjoy it okay so let me t just tell you about some records that I played last night or try to and then one that I just pulled because I wanted to show it because um I was thinking about it, but this is a group or a collective of people in out of Colorado, I think. Candy Claws. It's the only thing I have by them, but this came out in 2010. Hidden Lands, and it's uh, the billet as a musical companion to The Secret Life of the Forest, a book by Richard M. Ketchum which I have not read, but I certainly like this album, and I like the phantasm, fan, fantasy um, idea, just the music captures it, their whole idea of, you know, we're um, representing a place that doesn't actually exist or existed in, at one point long ago in time, long ago in time, but really more like a, a mental Shangri-La of sorts. It's a really lush, weird music that's almost like Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, almost soundtracky. Kind of strange. I really like this album, Hidden Lands. I hadn't pulled it in a while. It just, things will pop up in my head or something will create a reference where I'll des decide to play something. I pulled this and played a couple sides of this again. The, the, the recent release of Can Live in Stuttgart 75 posted and talked about it a bit online. Um, this is really good and it really does capture the magic of what Can did they were a band that played. They were people who played together and were able to create. It's something that people can do. It's nothing that is really something hugely special. It's something that every all musicians can do. Get together and play and create something that's larger than the parts. Um, but some combinations and at some points in time m magical special things happen and uh, this has a uh, <clears throat> magical aspect to to it it was a good night for them it was good playing it um, prompted me to pull um, some bootlegs I have by Ken to re-listen to and here's a good one 1976 in Hanover um, Michael Caroli on guitar is singing. They don't have, uh, Damo is no longer with them at this time. This is really good playing. Uh, it's a boot, but the, the sound quality is decent. Here's one I'm about to play. I haven't got to it yet, but another uh, boot. Auf der Einbahnstrasse, live in Köln. Both of these have come out in several configurations over the years. CD, different bootleg copies under different names. But, um, can, what a band. Here's an interesting, um, 
I believe it's, I believe the brand is Italian. And a very cool, very cool one album, Hero, Hero. It's, it's, it goes under Prague, but it's, it's more than that. That's just how people always tag this shit. Um, it's musically and um, atmospherically what I really like about it. I don't know what they're singing about. Not really drawn to the vocal, vocal style either so much. But it does a lot of shifting musically. And um, the um, general playing just, I guess if anything, a reference could be Van der Graaff Generator for me among others, but it's really pretty um, unique sounding to me. Hero. This goes back to the 70s, I'm pretty sure. This is a reissue, by the way. One of those hard-to-find records. Now here's one that I bought from Almost Music back in the day. Knew nothing about it, and I took Brad's recommendation on it. He thought I would like it, and um, he's right. Dominique Lavalry first meeting. This looks like this was probably a one-off um, private release originally, and then was picked up, rediscovered. Uh, it's like a solo musician playing uh, keyboards primarily, um, like Music Saint Eric is one of the titles. And that's really what you get is this guy kind of doing his take on an Eric Satie approach. And then there's other pieces that are, <clears throat> it's nice. It's like it's kind of ambient, kind of kraut rock like, kind of, uh, yeah. Not anything like really knockout, but it's like, wow, this is pretty cool. And, um, much love to the guy, but he didn't do himself any favors with that um, nondescript cover. But again, sometimes I think this is the whole idea of these covers, which is, you know, this isn't at all about some sort of image or what we think people want to or need to see. I just made this record, and here I am, and here it is. This is really pretty good. An album that I bought that because of the, uh, first off, because of, when I first bought it was because of the association, and when I first listened to it, it was kind of hard to get through, kind of like Tony Conrad's um, thing he did with Faust, which I've had copies of and sold, but last night I really got it, and um, was able to ride the wave. Takahisa Kosugi, who was with Taj Mahal Travelers, this is a solo album, Catch Wave, it's um non-official reissue uh these are one this is another one of those albums really hard to uh hard to find and expensive when you do primarily pieces um made with drone violin and his voice um through effects and um uh, it really is trippy it does it's one of those kind of things where i i just ha i had to let go of wanting because that, that we can be like that, all right? I, th I think it's a general thing to say that we can listen to music with expectations, or we can like almost uh, subconsciously put expectations on what we want m the music to do, and um, when it doesn't do it, then we start to disengage. And that was part of my what I experienced with this, and it was like, no, let go of that and just go with what's happening here. And when I, w w more often than not, when I'm a lot, when I'm, a, I'm when I do that with whatever I'm listening to, it's a rewarding experience. Really happy, actually, to have the day off today. No recordings, no rehearsals, and um, uh, our ha our hospital beds are at 92% capacity in my uh, county right now, so the reality is that things are still strange. So I'm not of a mind to be going out, running around, shopping and doing shit. I'm staying at home safe today. I started to play this last night, and I wasn't in the mood. I'm going to try again today. Grupo Sportivo. 
Body odor is a gas, which is a play on words, body odor. Um, that's ban connections to um, Super Sister, Robert Jan Stips, works, worked with them, have a couple of their albums, and my band Norman and the Rockwells, we covered one of their songs, Girls Always Know, I think is the name of the song, it was a lot of fun to play. So this is a, um, there's a humorous aspect to the entire approach and sound of the uh, band, but very good playing as well, and imaginative arrangement. So I'm keeping this out and try to get back to it. Played one side of this as I saw, as I do looking at the uh, music news worldwide, I see that this is being reissued for the first time, <clears throat> and for the first time in America through Light in the Attic. And there's Here's an, an original of it. Haromi Hosono, Japanese master musician. This is his album Paraiso, under the title, band title Harry Hosono and the Yellow Magic Band. This is the album that led to him forming Yellow Magic Orchestra. He hired Sakamoto and Takahashi as session players on this. I don't believe it was the first time they played together, but this is a mix of that island sort of thing that that um, Hosono is, is really into, that tropical thing even associated with Hawaiian music mixed with electronic very interesting hybrid you know, and also the um, his love of stuff like uh, Martin Denny and Arthur Lyman cool album is this the last thing? In the album? yeah, to show, okay Bo Hansen, Lord, music inspired by Lord of the Rings, 1972. I've had it ever since. One of my favorite albums, particularly to listen to on a gray day when it's raining or snow or just gray. Very evocative of, of my imagination. I just love this album. Played this yesterday when it was dark and rainy again. Today, the, the sun is starting to come out today. It's clearing up today, which is nice. Nice to hear from you, Gorbo. And indeed, I will um, kind of riff on more on the idea, not the idea of just um, mm, the general tone of what of what's going on when you come over here and spend time with me. Which is just having an, an eagle eye through my perception on the events of the world besides um, my voracious appetite for music and also sharing with you that it is my solace and it's one of the ways that being able to that spending time at home alone a lot is not a problem when you know because it's balanced with many activities as well as my routines here at home, my routine activities here at home. If I were idle and music were simply an escape, the only thing I did, it would not be enjoyable, it would be nothing for me to uh, to share with you. And so in that sense, this is enjoyable. Now that I'm looking at this, I do want to share with you, Martin Archer, I, I know you watch most of my videos. The most that I can say about this honestly right now is that I've given this another listen. The Martin Archer and John Jasnock Provenance new CD. I understand what you folks, what you guys were doing. It's a duet, guitar, uh, guitar with um, saxes, flute, bass, harmonica. The approach immediately brings to mind things like AMM, Derek Bailey, Evan Parker. That. English school of free improvisation. I know how to appreciate that stuff. I do. And that's how I approach this, which is just have to be in the right time to be, again, open to just letting their process um, connect with me. And uh, this was the second time that I started to listen to it. And um, I think the, the most honest thing I can say for my listening is that 
this is vital it's not pretend and by that I mean and this I mean this is a compliment but it's really kind of critical it seems that I can hear when the musicians catch themselves thinking and then they retreat back not retreat but they let go and and go back to letting the music take over that's from my experience all music is that's when the magic happens is when the music takes over whatever the idiom form is so I'm gonna go ahead and sign up here I could make I could comment for hours about all sorts of stuff you know I, I keep up with happening what's happening in the modern world of pop and so I'm aware of these new things that are coming out um, uh, the uh, international pop hit uh, I can call it up which again it's like I uh, you know, it's for young people. I'm not a young person, so but I wanted to, I want I don't know what's going on. Let me just see if I can find it right quick. I was watching uh and then some other uh young yeah, main main skin vegan. They were on Jimmy Fallon, so I watched that so I could see what you know what's going down. I noticed okay, I'll get this before I go the mumbly vocal style that is a from my perspective an aspect of how I think the industry like always are you taking that and exploiting it and I, the reason why I say it that way is because when I hear it I'm talking about people who are like really copying Billie Eilish and shit like that as well as the mumbly rappers it's annoying you know and just like that's what they want I'm in I'm you know I'm in, I'm in my 60s I'm an old wrinkled fuck you know to to young people and so the industry always loves to exploit those aspects of youth culture and that's what I hear in these pop records. Like some of them, they seem like production-wise, they're kind of interesting, but mostly it's just exploitive crap, as, as always in the mainstream. So that's my comment about some stuff that I've, I'm always checking out the mainstream. Okay, have a good weekend.